He is. However, Jesus did not do all of those mighty deeds as the Son of God. Did you know that? <clears throat> Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, please. Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> Beginning in verse 5 through 8. The Word of God says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, think like Jesus thinks. Who, being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. In other words, he emptied himself out of everything, of his godly uh, 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 being, everything, made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, excuse me, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to, unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, in the Amplified, that same scripture is a little bit more clear. The Word of God says, Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility, who, although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, in other words, possessing the fullness of the attributes which made God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. He stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity so as to assume the guise of a servant or a slave and that he became like men and was born a human being. Now... Jesus Christ ministered as a man, the Son of Man, filled and anointed with the Holy Ghost. The same way we are to minister. He is our example. If you look at the book of Acts chapter 10, Thank you, Father. Verse 38, chapter 10, verse 38. The Word of God says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So you see, Jesus himself was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Why? Because he was the Son of Man. He was the Son of Man. <clears throat> In Isaiah, why was he anointed? In Isaiah 10.27, the Word of God says, The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. In other words, the anointing breaks the yoke. What is the yoke? It is the yoke of bondage. Throughout the Old Testament, you'll find that men were anointed with oil, like David and Samuel and so forth, in order to perform certain duties. But if you look in Luke 3, hallelujah. Everybody still with me? Amen. Luke chapter 3. Verse 16, this is talking about where Jesus Christ was baptized in the river Jordan. This is John the Baptist talking, verse 16, it says, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mitre than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Talking about the believers, talking about us. And then if you jump down to verse 
21 and 22. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus, also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So you see, Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus became anointed with the Holy Ghost and power at the Jordan River. My dear people, it's time that we all get in the river. It's time that we all get in the river. (coughs) Immediately after that, Jesus was directed by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Immediately after, if you look at verse 4, or chapter 4, chapter 4. Immediately after Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost that descended upon him, he was immediately led into the wilderness. Chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, well, he's got the Holy Ghost, doesn't he? Returned from the Jordan, because he just got out of the river. He was led by the Spirit. You want, my dear people, you want to be led by the Spirit? Be filled with the Spirit. That's how you're led by the Spirit. If you're not filled with the Spirit, you can't be led by the Spirit. <clears throat> but he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when, he, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, there was a devil spoke to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone to be made bread. My dear people, what's the temptation? What is the temptation? He's saying, if the devil said unto him, if thou be, what? The Son of God. There's your temptation. He said, if thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it may be made bread. He was tempting him to act as the Son of God. And Jesus, what did he say? It is written, that man. Why? Because he was a Son of Man, anointed with power and and the Holy Ghost. You see? Read to you again. Jesus being led of the Holy Ghost returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, he spoke to him, and he said, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it may be made bread. And Jesus answered him and said, Hey, it is written, That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Live by every word of God. In verse 4, And Jesus... Sorry, verse 5, And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a very moment of time. You know what he's talking, showing him there? He's showing him spiritual kingdoms. And he's saying, and the devil said, spoke to him, and he said, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. My dear people, it goes to show you who the God of this world is. It's Satan. Those are his kingdoms. They were not. They would not be a temptation. If thou therefore wilt worship me, and all shall be thine. In other words, he's saying, Jesus, <coughs> you worship me, and you can have all these kingdoms. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him up to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, tempted him again. Are you the Son of God? Prove it. Prove it. Go ahead, prove it. Cast yourself down from hence. If you're the Son of God, do it. Prove it. See the temptation? What did Jesus say? Hey, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. What's he saying? It is written. He's saying, get thee behind me, Satan. You see, my dear people, uh, Jesus (coughs) combated the devil with the word of God. How? 
He said, it is written. What was he doing? He was declaring God's word. What was he doing? He said, hey, this is the truth. I, buy, uh, uh, I loose, the, uh, loose the truth and bind the lie. You see, my dear people, in John 10.10, 10, the Word of God says, The thief cometh but to, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus said, I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. If you're not having life and having it more abundantly, then the devil is stealing it. It's that simple. <clears throat> The anointed Word of God, spoken by Holy Ghost-filled men, will bring results and solve problems in your life. If only you will dare to believe God. If only you would dare to believe God. <clears throat> Get in the river. Get in the river. In Luke 4.18, Jesus Himself said, He declared, it, uh, uh, and He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them which are bruised. Jesus began, began His public ministry using God's powerful Word, declaring that he was anointed by the Holy Spirit of God. My dear people, God has already sent his word to bring salvation. He has brought his word to heal you. He has brought his word to overturn any situation in your life. And all you've got to do is put his word to work in your life. Many times in the Word of God, we read that Jesus would frequently steal away to spend private time in prayer with the Father. I would venture to say that Jesus spent half of His time on His knees. Yes, prayer is right and good, but do you know what He was doing? Do you know what He was doing? He was maintaining His anointing. You better believe it. He was maintaining His anointing. And that's what I'm going to be ministering about next week. Maintaining the anointing. Because you see, Jesus also declared to His disciples what the anointing on their lives would accomplish for God's glory. He said in John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth... How many believers we got in here? He's saying, He that believeth... On me, on him, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Why? Because I go unto my Father. That's right. Now when you see, when you go back to look at Mark chapter 15. Remember the verse I read first started out? Mark 15. And he said unto them, to the disciples, to us, he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and they shall drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now you know how to go ye. Get in the river. He's talking to the believers. He's saying, get in the river. Now you may say, yeah, well, that was the, that was the 11 disciples, the 11 apostles. I've heard people say that. Luke chapter 10 This is where Jesus had sent out 70. Now we've got 70 apostles, I guess. You got 70 apostles? This is where he sent out 70. He said, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Wow, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Amen. 
And Jesus said unto him, I beheld Satan as he as lightning fell from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power, and that word power is in, in the Greek is, is, is authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall hurt you. So there's the 70. My dear people, get in the river. Get in the river. In John chapter 7, Oh, hallelujah. Verse 37 and 38. The Word of God says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He said, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water in the river. We see in Acts, the book of Acts chapter 1, the Word of God here is talking about the Holy Ghost. And He's talking to the disciples here. How many of you know that there were 120 people in the upper room? There were 120 people in that upper room, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. And being assembled together with them, this is Jesus talking, He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith He, ye have heard of me. In other words, do not leave home, do not go out. Don't do anything until you receive the promise. Why? Because that's your power to come against the evil forces that are out there. And in verse 8, he said, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come up on you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, he's talking about a promise here. So what's he talking What kind of promise? If you look at uh, Luke. Twenty four. Luke twenty four, verse forty nine. Hallelujah. The word of God says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father up on you. But tear ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So we have a proof of the promise of endowment of power from on high. In other words, the, the power of the Holy Ghost. And in John, we're just about finished here. Fourteen, verse sixteen. The Word of God says, "And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, and He may abide with you forever." Talking about the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. And in verse twenty-six, it says, "But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in My name, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance uh, whatsoever I have said unto you." And then in the book of Acts, we see the fulfillment. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And they were in one, in one accord in one place. Very similar to this. They were in an upper room. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as was of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So you see, these people had all got in the river. All 120 of them, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the reason I emphasize that, because I've heard people say, well, the tongues, that's of the devil. I've heard people say that. Do you mean, do you mean that, uh, that, that, that God would let all 120 people be filled with tongues of the devil? 
including his own mother, Mary. Do you? Hmm? No. See, that's a lie from the devil right there. Why? He don't want you to have any power. He don't want you laying hands on the sick. He doesn't want you to pick up this book and understand it. You can't understand that book if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? It was written by a spirit. Through a spirit to a spirit. You better believe it. It takes spiritual understanding to understand spiritual things. And if your spirit is not alive, you're not going to understand it. So you must remember that the devil is a deceiver. He is a liar. He comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. And if he can steal the Word of God from you, he's going to do it, isn't he? Why? Because he's scared to death of you. That's why. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, my dear people, <clears throat> there is a river. The Word of God plainly says, Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Turn it a little bit from the <clears throat> very low. Without the power of the Holy Ghost, I want you all to listen to me, my dear people. Without the power of the Holy Ghost, church is the deadest thing this side of heaven. Without the power of the Holy Ghost, Religion is dead, dull, dry, listless, and lifeless. Without the Holy Ghost, the Bible is a closed book. With the Holy Ghost, Jesus becomes alive. Jesus becomes real. Jesus fills your heart. Jesus fills your life. With the Holy Ghost, heaven opens. The gates open wide and the rivers flow. The glory of God penetrates your spirit. Everything the river touches lives. Get in the river. Get in the river. If your church is dead, get it in the river. If your pastor or your preacher, whoever he is, get is dead, get him in the river. The river is flowing. The river is flowing. My dear people, the river is flowing all over the earth. All over the earth. There is revival moving all over the earth. And people are getting filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. All over the earth. Why? The harvest has began. The Lord has given us instruction to begin declaring the harvest. It's already began. Jesus becomes more and more and more real in the river. He becomes more real in the river. Why? Because out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Would you all stand with me, please? Oh, that's fine.